candid camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's laughing because I said smile. We're on candid camera. So <clears throat> how do you get to be your quirky self and still attract your dream customers? Now, do you feel like maybe you're not the expert, so you don't really have any business uh, giving expert tips? Do you feel like um, you're kind of out of your league, that you don't really have, maybe you're feeling like you don't have very much to offer? And do you feel like maybe your quirkiness is maybe not going to give you the customers and the influence that you want? Um, if that's you, drop hashtag quirky below because we're going to actually um, tell you to actually own it. So if that like gave you this huge sigh of relief, drop hashtag own it below because this right here, this is the game changer in the business. When you can actually embrace your quirkiness, you are gonna find your tribe. It's true. I was telling Levi that earlier that this is just such a great way to be able to reach more people and still be my authentic self. <laughs> exactly. That's what it's all about is like own your hot mess, own your quirkiness, own who you really are and be a little bit vulnerable. And when you can share that, People are going to notice. Yeah. So, did you introduce us? Oh, I don't <laughs> we're, know. We're Jill and Levi Hensaker <laughs> from jillandlevihensaker.com. And, and yeah, like if, if, if you want to learn ways to, to really own your quirkiness, be your, embrace your hot mess, and really attract your dream customers because of that, Go ahead, drop heck yeah in the comments below, and we will reach out to you with more information. But let's talk about you know, some ways, some tips on, on how to do that. And we're gonna start it off with a story. So, the other day I said to Levi that you know, our story of how we met was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man. We met in a class and uh, I noticed him right away and he was pretty shy. And so it's true. <laughs> shy guy, surprisingly. Um, but my friend who was also in the class, I was like, who is that boy? <laughs> and <laughs> so we were, you know, 16, 17. Keep in mind, this is, we were in high school at the time. <laughs> and, uh, and she said, uh, like, kid's my gymnastics coach like you know she Weird. just she just thought he was this doofy kid that helped <laughs> teach her class i'm still kind of a doofy kid <laughs> but i was like <laughs> you have to introduce me to him and then later that day i went over to my sister's house and i was like i met this cute boy his name's levi hunsaker and she's like look out the window do you see that house across the street that's where he lives and i was like and it turned out that her husband was one of his youth leaders at their church. And so anyway, a few weeks go by. Small world. I was dropping hints and looking cute and, you know, <laughs> trying to be charming. <laughs> and uh, for a while I was afraid that he just was not, <laughs> you know, not interested or was never going to be brave enough to ask me out. And, uh, so what, what, what was your perspective? <laughs> oh, what was my perspective? I was just like, well, we, we walked across the street together, um, between classes and stuff like that. But I, I just didn't feel like I had the guts to actually ask her out. Now, to be fair, she actually did have a boyfriend at the time, so <laughs> I thought I was just being a good dude, but but even then, had she not had a boyfriend, I'm not convinced that I would have made the move either. 
Yeah, well, I was sure to let him know <laughs> that if he asked me out, I would say yes. And when they did these spotlights in our class, they would, you know, tell things about each student. And on the day that it was my turn, they were doing my spotlight. And uh, one of the questions that they asked on the form was, describe your dream date. And all I wrote was Levi Hunsaker. <laughs> and I thought for that, sure... That was a bold flex right there. <laughs> I thought for sure that would get his attention. And then he just sat there. And I was like... I had, I had like worked it out with the teacher so I could sit right behind him. So I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, did you hear that? And he's like, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> anyway... After weeks and weeks of trying to, uh, you know, make sure he knew that what my intentions were, <laughs> he finally... She, she was pretty dang clear. There was no room for doubt in that situation. He finally asked me out. So my mom always says that I chased him until he caught me. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, there was just no turning back. That's right. So why do we tell you this story? Um, attraction marketing. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, you know, you might be thinking, well, I was playing hard to get. Um, you might even be thinking that I was the one doing the attraction marketing. Yeah. And maybe, maybe a little like passively, just like by, by being myself, being goofy, being quirky, um, Showing off his talents, showing off his muscles, you know. <laughs> hey, if you, you got to use what you got, right? But um, I would say that I was using maybe like a passive attraction marketing. And what we want to talk about here today is how do you use active attraction marketing? How do you be intentional instead of just having it be happenstance. Yeah. So, so this lady right here, would you believe me if I told you she was the one that was actually doing the attraction marketing? If you believe that, put hashtag yes. And if you believe I was the one doing it, <laughs> put hashtag not a chance. <sighs> yeah. After <laughs> I, so we, when we were talking the other day, I, I said, you've been using attraction marketing since before you even knew what it was. Cause you know, you've, you caught my eye, and uh, then after I reviewed the story, I was like, I was the one <laughs> using attraction marketing. I was the one that was like, I had my target market, <laughs> had my target in my sights, and I did, you know, everything to get the attention of that person, so. <laughs> yeah, and... And it's all about, like earlier today on our paste, I, I posted a quote from Steve Larson talking about, hey, we're not in the information age anymore. We're in the traction age. That the person who, not necessarily the person who has the best product or service, but the person who gets the most attention usually gets paid the most. And so we'd like you guys to learn how to get more attention, but not just any kind of attention. The kind of attention that brings people to you on their own because once you can flip that script and have people asking you about your business and how you can actually um, have conversations with these people about enrolling about purchasing your products and they're reaching out to you that right there is gold because you've changed the direction of the flow instead of you going and trying to talk to people one on one on one on one hi <laughs> um i i distract myself i think we both have some level of add a little bit <laughs> most entrepreneurs do so if you can if you can relate put hashtag add because that's the reality what's going on here so anyway it is so we started by talking to one person at a time and we started doing, you know, uh, network gatherings and anything we could do to meet new people. But that 
kind of gets exhausting after a while to just try to chase down new prospects. Yeah. So. And one of the best ways we found of communicating one to many is to become a producer. When you can be become a producer and put content out into the world so that you can bring people to you that are interested in that content that's all surrounding your brand and what you believe in, what you stand for, uh, what you're all about, that's it. So how does that relate to you doing attraction marketing on me in high school? Um, well, first of all, I narrowed down <laughs> the market, right? <laughs> Laser focused. <laughs> um, and then I figured out what they were interested in. Uh, yep. You know, what would get their attention. Um, and what content were you producing? Now, this, this one, you kind of have to think about it for a minute. But she was producing content everywhere I went. Mostly because she had a lot of ins everywhere. Oh, oh, I see. So I had my friend talk to him while he was at work at the gym. And do what, though? And say, you really ought to ask Jill out. Right? So you're promoting. Uh -huh. you, um, she was telling stories. <laughs> You know, talking her up, telling stories. You know, if you ask her out, she'll break up with this other guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had my brother-in-law talk to him when he went to church. And her sister talked to me. <laughs> like, this this was like a, a full-on assault. <laughs> well, that doesn't make it sound very attractive. Uh, maybe maybe we'll call it full court press. We'll use a basketball reference. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know much about basketball, but I got what I intended to get. So. <laughs> Winner. I, I, I think we're both winners in this situation, though. So um, anyway, this attraction marketing thing is the same way. By producing content, telling stories, continuing to put content in front of people, promoting, getting attention, getting attention, and ultimately, everybody wins, right? As as you're gaining new customers and team members, they're winning, as well as you, because it's all about serving them in the best way possible, and and that might mean that you have conversations where people just don't. Like, it's not a good fit. Do you have the guts to tell somebody it's not a good fit? To say no to somebody who wants to say yes? Or to give them maybe a different option that doesn't even involve you? That right there is true servant leadership. And when you can do that in your business, you're going places. So... Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, nope. My, okay. My brain went <laughs> bye-bye. Her brain is bye-bye. The story is there. <laughs> so remember, as you get going in this, you want to be a content producer. You want to know who you're talking to and actually talk to them. And three, make sure that it is focused on service. What is in it for them? Because when you can basically have no ulterior motive except to serve and to be the best part of someone's day, as Mark Hoverson said, that is true service, to be the best part of someone else's day. So if you do, just as a reminder, um, I'm having a brain fart here. Service, content, and know who you're speaking to. And when you do those three things, I, I honestly believe that you cannot go wrong because you are going to find the people that are attracted to you and just become your loyal followers because they love what you are, love who you are, love what you stand for, and they love your brand. So if you want to learn more about how you can do this for yourself, drop a heck yeah below and we will reach out to you with more information.
So with that, have a great night, everybody. Good night.